Yeah. I heard Microsoft said they were secure. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> That's the official tagline I was told to say. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, welcome to my talk. This is uh, how to build your own covert signal vehicle. How many of you guys do signals intelligence work or have done signals intelligence work? You can raise your hand. Don't feel shy. Yeah. How many of you guys uh, log into your work computer with a cat card? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't feel shy. It's all right. We've all been down that road. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So awesome. Uh, this is going to be covering uh, just hardware and software side building your own covert signal vehicle, to, uh, so you get pulled over less, or you get questioned less by police officers uh, when you're stopping by and you don't have a billion computers hanging out of your car. So the agenda is uh, pretty simple. Um, it's the intro and reasoning, um, and the uh, just how to build it, software behind it, testing in the field, uh, on our way to DerbyCon, and uh, different build types, little uh, little funny anecdotes at the end as well. Uh, so disclaimer, of course, always need a disclaimer. My uh, expressions are not the, uh, and, and my viewpoints here are not the viewpoints necessarily of my employer. And uh, if you do anything with RF, uh, please do not, uh, oh, we got a lot of people coming in. Okay. I'll wait for a second. Here, let's start this over for a second. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do this really quickly. <laughs> Some of you are going to think there was a glitch in the matrix. Don't worry, it's not deja vu. All right, cool. <clears throat> so welcome everyone who just came in. Uh, this talk, as you can see, is about how to build your own covert SIGINT vehicle. Uh, it should be some pretty fun shit. Uh, the agenda, there you go for everyone that has OCD and needs to see an agenda. Mostly my QA people that are like, you don't have an agenda in your talk. Um, disclaimer, uh, my views expressed in this talk are of my own and not of my employers. Uh, do not do things that could cause harm to RF systems, which you do not own, even unintentionally. Mm, something, something FCC sends letters to you before they start sending fine. How many letters they send you, I have no clue. I can tell you they send at least three. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, if you work for the FCC, uh, I love you. Uh, <laughs> Please don't send a fine. Uh, no, they're actually really cool, uh, and it's mostly about stupidity on my part. Whenever they send you, a, like, send send something to the address of, they don't ever say your name. Uh, so a little bit about me: uh, senior consultant, Coal Fire Labs right now. Uh, I break things for them. Uh, I'm an advisor for a lab environment called Pentest Labs. Uh, I used to build little radio toys uh, for the government, and uh, no matter what I did in the past, like people that worked with me or clients or friends of mine that would know about my work always said that I put this uh, ISME catcher in a coffee maker and I put it around the office and turn it on, um, which was true. Uh, but I was told I was allowed to do that. Um, so, uh, Mr. Coffee, it's like the so non-threatening. I loved it. It did not work, by the way. It just you couldn't pour water into it, um, and that is how Mr. Coffee is me catcher died. <laughs> so, um, why build a covert uh, mobile SIGINT platform uh, at all? Uh, and my initial response to this question is, uh, why the hell not? Uh, it's a whole bunch of fun. Um, I mean, I like playing with RF things. I'm sure some of you guys like playing in RF things. If you don't, you might be at the wrong talk. Um, but that's all right. Uh, so other reasons why I wanted to do this really was, uh, you know, we live in this world where we get bombarded with RF all the time. And uh, with this, 
Uh, RF is now, I mean, the Internet of Things, though it's been a term for many years, it's now really catching on. Uh, it's just expanding everyone's RF fingerprint that participates in this world called the Internet of Things. So if you have a Fitbit or if you have, you know, uh, an Apple smartwatch or something like that, uh, you are part of this new RF-driven world. Um, and though there's been a lot of talks on RF, uh, I've been talking about RF stuff for, uh, I don't know, not that long, like five years, uh, but people have been talking about it, you know, obviously for decades. Uh, well, yeah, uh, for definitely decades. Um, there hasn't been a lot in the security community about signals intelligence, and uh, more people are waking up. Uh, what I mean by that is, like, people are understanding the value which uh, their data has in the RF space. Uh, you know, uh, people used to say the government didn't pull all the type of metadata from phone conversations. Uh, I remember having this debate with one of my bosses uh, about three weeks before the Snowden leaks came out. And as soon as they came out, I just looked over at him. He sat right in front of me, and I was just like, I fucking told you so. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, Echelon, that program's been known about for a long, long time, which I think is the most badass program in the world. Um, if you don't know what it is, definitely Google it. It is this on steroids with an unlimited budget. Things I only wish I could do, uh, but would never be able to. I'm not smart enough. They have people way smarter than me doing that. Uh, so, um, yeah, things like that. So, oh, oh yeah, and of course, uh, like with the lanyard I wear around all the time, uh, this is my mantra when it comes to my Jeep. In God we trust, all others we must monitor. So, um, yeah. So a little bit of background if you're not really familiar with signals intelligence. Uh, maybe you're just familiar with uh, radio, uh, how it's used, but not really how it's used in a government space or a private sector space. Uh, it's been around for quite a long time. The military's been up and up on it. They've been doing it since the early 1900s. Uh, it's pretty much the same. I mean, physics really hasn't changed. Equipment has gotten better. Um, you know, antennas are getting better, uh, but software is getting better. But, uh, you know, it's still the same thing. You, know, you capture things, you analyze things. Uh, you still have to follow, uh, you know, mostly all the rules that were there back then. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but in the olden days, you know, this is what a signals intelligence chief would look like. And today, uh, this is sort of what their platforms look like. Uh, who knows what the name of this vehicle is? It's a what? Yes. Uh, do you know what the, so the package that they sell it under, do you know what they call that? It's called uh, the Profit. Uh, pretty awesome name, pretty awesome vehicle. Um, there are uh, cooler vehicles, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. So a lot of people, when I talk about uh, anything signals intelligence, they want to talk about um, what does the government use it. Uh, and I'm just going to cover this very, very generally uh, for mobile platforms. So one popular item, more popular actually within the uh, uh, TSCM community, is like a Think RF. Uh, pretty awesome unit. Does like uh, 100 kilohertz, I believe, to 28 gigahertz. Uh, there are some breaks in there. Costs around uh, 8,500. Um, so if you got $8,500 laying around and you don't want to build anything in this vehicle and you already want pretty graphs and stuff like that, get this unit. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I know someone that has this. They use it for work, and the system's ridiculous. This next system is a stock photo. I haven't been in the vehicle that was in this photo, but I've been in vehicles that have the equipment that is on this vehicle and in this vehicle, but it's more in a, like a box van type of setup. Um, it's by... Uh, Roars and Sorts, uh, RNS, totally fucked up that name. Uh, but they're the uh, pretty much spectrum analyzer kings. Uh, but they also build uh, just complete rollout units for governments. And those systems are awesome. Uh, they also build like little buggies. So it's got like a, it's like a little off road buggy you would see if you're like a bro in California or something and you go to the dunes. Um, they have SIGINT packages in those. Uh, I've driven around in those. Those are the freaking best things ever because you could just like, you see logs and you're like, oh shit, we got like, you know, half a million dollars worth of SIGINT gear in the back of this and they just like run over it with no problem because of the suspension. Um, yeah, they're a lot braver than I am with that system. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the actual hardware side of the SIGINT Jeep now. So within this talk, 
Um, someone asked me to put a link to where I would have this all documented. And I don't have everything up there. Uh, in fact, I, I really have a splash page. Um, and that's because I had to uh, rewrite a lot of my software this week uh, for various reasons. Um, so uh, check out this site. Uh, towards uh, this week, during this week, everything will be updated. Everything I show today uh, will be on there uh, and more that I don't show. Um, so this talk will give you a good understanding of the build, uh, build process. It won't give you everything. There is a detailed how-to document that I'm releasing. Uh, go check out that. Uh, and then there's a vehicle-specific one. So I did this with a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. Um, I have a one that's a general document if you just want to do this for a vehicle, and the one that is like, make sure you use this tool when you're taking this panel off on the Jeep. Um, if you guys build one in your vehicle, um, don't tell your wife. Uh, and uh, <laughs> ask for forgiveness after she finds out. Um, and then, uh, you know, try to document it if it's not a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And uh, this, this talk is not really about uh, the methods behind signals intelligence. That's, that's, a, that's a many years long class uh, or five days, you know, if you really want to be intense with it. Uh, but you only know, you'll only scratch the surface with a five day class. Um, so it's not going to teach you how to capture everything and how to do everything. The software is a framework to help you expedite that, but you still have to know uh, a bit about RF before you can really just capture a random signals of interest and then get straight data from it. Um, so we won't teach you how to take over the world, um, maybe a tiny bit, but not, not everything. So safety first. This is super crucial. We are hackers. Not all of us are mechanically inclined, okay? Like, I changed my oil in my car for the first time when I was in high school, like, eight, seven, seven years ago? How long ago was that? Seven years ago? Yeah, some, eight, eight years ago. Um, so, so yeah, I was like a senior in high school, and I, like, changed the oil in my car. Um, so I was not very mechanically inclined. I would not say I'm that super mechanically inclined right now. But, uh, so safety, definitely. These little eye goggles things, Definitely a need to. You need to be able to see the shit that you hack, so uh, get a kit on that. Have your cell phone with you. Um, if your car falls on you, I've luckily never really had that experience, but if you like are messing with something, you pick up your back, uh, back. <laughs> if you uh, pick up your battery incorrectly from your vehicle because you're leaning over, because you don't want to walk to the other side, uh, and you throw out your back, uh, you can be on the ground for like a few hours. Um, so have your cell phone with you just in case anything like that happens. Uh, wear gloves uh, so you don't get your pretty little hands all messed up. Uh, maybe have a friend that is mechanically inclined. Uh, hopefully he's not a Lego person. He's a real person. Um, uh, also, always uh, use safety when you're trying to uh, lift up your vehicle, if you have to do that for any reason, or working on uh, building this system. Uh, stop locks, you know, proper jacks, things like that. Uh, and disconnect your battery. Uh, batteries are fun to play with, um, not fun to have strapped to your hands and then you're touching random things and you get shocked. Um, so yeah. So here's the general diagram. Um, this lays it out fairly easily uh, of how this Jeep worked. Um, so obviously we have the battery. We have, uh, I use four gauge cable, uh, welder cable. Um, going to two different power blocks. Then I have two rig runners uh, that I have it go to. And everything else um, is hooked up depending on what they uh, are on those two rig runners. So the uh, BRICS AMD system, Gigabyte BRICS system, and the uh, USRP are hooked up to one rig runner. Uh, and then the other rig runner has the uh, amplifiers on them. Uh, within my Jeep, this is the placement of items that I had on it. Uh, so the red cable is basically just how I ran power. Um, it's not that pretty. Uh, I mean, it is pretty. You can't see anything, but it's not a straight line. Um, and then, you know, HEMI cable. So some of you might note that I have some of the HEMI uh, digital signal uh, with the antenna part. Um, yes, it does cause a tiny bit of interference. No, it's not super noticeable. Um, but it can uh, also make sure you run your antenna runs uh, and your power runs on opposite sides of the vehicle or you'll just have a terrible day. 
Uh, an antenna placement is important as well. Try to space them as far as away as you can. Um, it's possible. Uh, that's not possible on every single vehicle, but the further away they are from each other, um, the better reception you're going to get, the less interference you're going to get as well. So building tips. Uh, plan everything out. Uh, so I spent quite a while planning how I want to do my vehicle. Just kidding. I just was, was like, oh, I'm just going to start hooking things up. And uh, it didn't go out well my first time I built my vehicle. Uh, went a lot better second time I built everything. Um, so uh, interference is the biggest thing you want to look for. Uh, make sure whenever you're running your antennas, again, just stressing this point, that you have minimal uh, other signals going, running, uh, you know, uh, along the antenna cables. You don't want any of that. It will pick up on it and you'll see a whole bunch of noise doing signals intelligence will be terrible and um, you'll want to quit. Um, so uh, do things in relevant sections as well. Uh, some people might say, oh, I want to do all the power first and then I'm going to do the, you know, the uh, device placement. Um, it's not the best route. It's like you might do your power run from your battery to the back of your vehicle first uh, and then you might uh, take your entire system uh, or your devices, uh, place those on there, and then do the rest of your power runs. That's how I did my vehicle. Um, I actually first did my antenna runs because I based everything off of that um, so I'd have minimal interference. Uh, make sure you measure multiple times because uh, you can't just hit Control-Z and undo your mistake. Uh, and those mistakes can be costly sometimes. So these are just some photos of uh, building this. Um, I, deal, I did drill holes through my roof of my Jeep. Uh, sure, it will do terrible for my resale value. Um, but uh, it, uh, it allowed me to have a more secure grounded connection. That's what I was going for. Uh, make sure you sand away the paint, even on the bottom, um, so you can have a solid ground um, for your antennas, or that's just going to mess everything up. Uh, you'll waste all that time. Um, and then uh, once you have a clean hole and that's filed around everywhere. Uh, you start putting your antenna mounts in there. I use NMO antenna mounts for mine, standard ham radio, um, antenna mount, CB radio. Um, you know, they're pretty universal. Uh, they're sufficient um, for zero DC to six gigahertz, uh, at least with the SMA connector. Um, I think uh, technically is like 18, but I've always had problems with going out over nine, uh, nine gigahertz with a SMA connector. Uh, put on your little antenna, as you see, that's a little tiny antenna, 700 megahertz to 2700 megahertz. It's mostly meant for LTE, um, but uh, I use it to capture like 900 megahertz ISM. Uh, it does not do really well when you want to try to uh, capture, you know, uh, uh, like a L-band type signal, so no SATCOM stuff, sorry. Um, but cellular works great. Um, 900 megahertz ISM works great. Uh, there are larger antennas that I have, and I have a picture of them further down in the slides. Um, so uh, those are for different frequencies, obviously. Again, your antennas will depict what you want to do with your system, and they're also one of the most important parts of your system. Uh, if you have everything installed correctly, do not think that you can buy a, you know, a $5 rubber ducky antenna off of Amazon and it's going to be the same thing uh, as a, a ta Talios, Talgos, yeah, I don't know. Company starts with a T, makes awesome antennas. Um, I forget how to say their name. Uh, but uh, those antennas are going to be a lot better and they're also not going to be $5, so. So you kind of pay for, uh, most of the time, you pay uh, what you get in the RF field. So this is me laying out my device. I made it so that everything in my Jeep can be easily removed. Uh, this whole panel that you see is actually just one removable part in the back of my Jeep. Um, so if I do want to resell my vehicle, uh, or if I just don't want to be driving around with all this equipment in there, let's say I'm going out of town on a little mini road trip, uh, and I'm not capturing signals because my wife is also in the vehicle and she hates it when I do stuff like that. Um, so uh, she she thinks she's going to get cancer. I'm just like, don't worry. I don't have the powerful amps hooked up to this. And we're not broadcasting because that would be illegal. Remember, that that's illegal. Um, if you do it on licensed frequencies or in your interfering with other people. But yeah, so you can take this whole thing out. It's very simple. 
It takes uh, two screws, uh, two, two of the power uh, uh, connectors. That's all you have to take out for the entire vehicle. And then you can take this whole platform out. Um, also, I bought another one of these uh, back parts for the Jeep for like $50 at a junkyard. Um, so uh, that's what I wanted everything to be easily removable. Uh, and if I sell the Jeep, which I never plan on it, but if I do for whatever reason, um, I can just take everything out without having to go through the whole hassle of unscrewing everything and then the new owner being like, why do you have all these holes drilled through your Jeep? Uh, this is running power cables. This is the worst part. You will hate your life. Um, get proper tools for this. Uh, they have, like, I use, um, what are they called? Andy's connectors? Uh, Anders, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, so, uh, power pole based connectors. Uh, use the little crimper tool that they sell. Costs like $40. Spend the $40. Don't try to be smart and be like, ah, oh, I got a vice. I can do this. No. No, no, no. Also, when you, uh, put lug nuts, uh, not lug nuts, if you put, uh, uh, loops on your power cables. Also spend the $120 to get the, cape, the, the hydraulic jack that does that and don't try to uh, um, use a vice or use a little, uh, there's a little hammer device that you can have with them. I used that for two of them and I ripped out that entire connection set because eventually one of the cables came off. I don't know, maybe I'm just a pussy and I didn't hit it hard enough. Uh, very possible. Uh, maybe I should have tried hitting it with a sledgehammer and not my purse. Um, but, um, so, uh, and when I say my purse, I mean my wife's purse, of course. I don't have purses. Uh, no, um, so definitely use the proper tools. It will speed everything up. It will save you time. You'll hate yourself less at the end of the process. Um, so this is the uh, one side. These are the two rig runners that I have going on, and you can actually see one of the power block distributors. Um, they install in these two little flaps. Uh, you actually really can't see them. Maybe you can see them. Nope. You'll see them later on. Um, but it's all hidden. You can't see anything. You'll see that later on in the talk. Um, but everything here, as you see, is laid out. Um, and uh, it worked out well. Also, um, these power uh, converters that take DC to do like 5 volts. They do 6 volts for the USRP. They do 19 volts for the... Uh, um, little gigabyte bricks uh, AMD system and I keep on saying the AMD one because it has a dedicated graphics card and you want that for GR Phosphor. We'll cover that a little bit later. Um, but if you buy really cheap ones because you think you know what you're doing and you're like, yeah, it's probably, it's probably made in the same Chinese manufacturing plant as the really expensive ones uh, and then you learn that they're not uh, that's why I have a little Intel Nook there because my friend let me borrow that because I killed my first uh, AMD brick system because I bought the cheap ones. So spend just like it's double the cost. It's literally like you spend $10 or you spend $20 per piece. Um, spend the extra one, get the better system. Uh, yeah, also wrap up, make sure all your cables are pretty. Uh, especially if you're giving a talk about this because people will just criticize you if you don't. Uh, I will be one of those people. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my wife was one of those people before I had everything all prettied up. She was just like, this looks like shit. How much did you spend on this? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, make everything count. Uh, make sure everything is neat. Uh, it will save you hassle um, when you have to actually place everything in there. You don't want any wires getting caught up on anything and then ripping out like a little LNA uh, amp. So this is what it looks like when the back part of my Jeep is open, um, behind the little jumper cables, below the little long reach unlock bar, you can see where I had like the little panels where I installed all the power components. Um, but as you can see, you see a USRP, you see two LNAs, um, well, assume those little square things right here uh, are LNAs, these two, and then you see these little power amplifier ones. These are small amplifiers uh, for the power amplifier ones because you really shouldn't have to transmit on anything. Um, again, the FCC will get angry at you. Uh, so don't think you're going to be running some 5-watt power amplifier in your Jeep or in your vehicle. They also take a lot of power draw, and it will probably kill your alternator if you're not doing it uh, correctly. Um, but yeah, so uh, these, these are little 1-watt amps. Um, but uh, yeah, this is everything hooked up in my Jeep. Uh, this is how it drives around. 
This is what it looks like covered up. Uh, and this is what my wife saw for like the first three months of this project. Um, she's not tall enough to see the top of my uh, roof, so she didn't see the little antennas that I had on there. Uh, it was when I had the longer, much longer, um, 125 megahertz to uh, 580 megahertz uh, wideband antennas on there that she realized, um, well, she asked me, why do you have those things on top of your roof? Uh, and then she quickly realized that it was because I drilled holes in it. Uh, and she got angry, but not too angry because I'm giving this talk and I'm still alive. So that, that I mean, that, that's a quick summary of the hardware of the Jeep. Um, now we're going to talk more about the uh, actual um, software behind the Jeep. Uh, again, uh, this was rewritten a few days ago, um, so please be kind. Uh, actually I actually had a friend, Royal, help me rewrite this. Um, so awesome shout out to him for helping me rewrite uh, some of this uh, for this talk. So this is what it looks like. Uh, really crappy screenshot. I know. I'm sorry. It's taken from a phone, but this is when it was running. We were running this last night, capturing some signals. Um, you can't really see it, I guess. Oh, maybe you can. Um, but it has like capturing signals of interest. You know, it has jamming. Uh, it has um, it has uh, well, P25. Uh, if you want to listen to like trunk police radio, um, also uh, OP. 25 does not work really well in Ubuntu 14.04. Um, unfortunately, don't try to upgrade your software right before your talk. Um, uh, an ISME catcher, a uh, whole bunch of IoT stuff, which does Zigbee, Bluetooth, um, Z-Wave, and um, has a help. So this is more uh, the signals intelligence part. Oh, you really can't see this. But we'll, we'll see what this looks like. So it has you know, capturing of signals intelligence, uh, first look at the signals intelligence, uh, demodding, uh, counting uh, symbols within the signals that you captured, uh, cleaning up of the signal, um, you have uh, clock recovery, all this stuff that you have to do with it, signals intelligence. Again, this framework gives you the tools that you need, it does not give you all the answers. So if you run a different type of signal through the items I'm about to show you, it's not going to work. You have to edit um, everything. Uh, beforehand, uh, a lot of this stuff was uh, in C++ um, and Bash. Uh, now, um, since I had to rewrite it, I had someone request that I do everything in GRC blocks. Um, and as painful as that was, I did everything in GRC blocks. Um, excuse me. So it's a lot easier to use now. Uh, for some people. So this is the route that I took from Atlanta, I live in Atlanta, um, to DerbyCon. I took it with two of my coworkers uh, who don't mind having cancer, I guess. Just kidding, we weren't transmitting. Um, but maybe one of them has cancer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we captured some of the signals uh, along this way. Um, if you just have the system running, the files become insanely large. We're talking hundreds of gigabytes large. Um, so you, you probably don't want to be capturing the full, the full, it was like six and a half hours for us to drive there. Um, this is the Jeep itself, uh, a little less covert because it has the Umbrella Corp stickers on it now. Um, but as you see, these are the, um, the medium sized antennas actually. Um, they're not the largest antennas because the largest ones do not fit in parking decks. Uh, and then in the front, you can't really see them. Um, which is actually how I run the system most of the time with four of those mini 700 megahertz to 2700 megahertz antennas because a lot of stuff I want to look at is uh, whether in the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, 900 megahertz ISM, uh, and some cellular stuff. Uh, so that's what the Jeep looks like. Uh, it just looks like, you know, I'm typed on some type of ham. You know, I like radio things. Um, doesn't really look threatening. So, um, cool part about the second Jeep is that you can actually, while it's raining, just sit in your car with the seat warmers on and capture signals from, you know, whatever power, this is a uh, power substation. Uh, they usually have some pretty cool signals going on. Uh, one thing that uh, one of my friends, Michael Allen, pointed out last night when we were driving around is he's like, what qualifies as a qualified personnel 
Drew, and I was just like, I don't know. He's like, I feel qualified. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I feel qualified too. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> a lot of the times you'll see these signs on these places. Uh, you know, I, And this is the funniest sign I've definitely seen. It usually says like no trespassing, anything like that. If you're in the Atlanta area, oh, this is just a warning. If you're in the Atlanta area and you stop by the water treatment plant uh, because you want to capture some signals, um, cops will show up. Uh, and before I had the SIGINT G package, I just had my laptop with a USRP and a billion fucking antennas everywhere in my car, right? Cops don't know what that is. You know what they see? Bomb. Uh, so <laughs> you have to explain to a cop, I'm a nerd, I'm not a threat. I'm just doing this for school or some other type of way to get out of the confrontation with the police officer. Um, so just be forewarned, cops can come, which is that cool. Uh, if you have the covert Jeep SIGINT package, turn off the monitor um, and just get on your phone, act like you're checking email or something. Of course, you're not doing anything illegal, so it doesn't really matter. You can just tell the cop I'm capturing these signals and I'm sure they'll fully understand that and they won't tase you. <laughs> Um, so there was a slight problem on the way of capturing signals up here. Uh, and that's because when I rewrote the software, instead of every single time I hit append on a file so that my files weren't being really large or so that I could save files um, uh, in chunks of where I could analyze them more easily, um, I forgot to put that in code. Um, so it just overwrote the file every single time. So I, I drove all this way from Atlanta to Kentucky with one capture. Um, so I made my own uh, so we can actually see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to show you the quick and dirty of this. Um, so we got this some type of signals of interest. What type of modulation is this? You get a free beer if you get it right. What? No, I haven't heard it yet. Starts with a P. How about that? Oh, there we go. Who said that? There you go, you get a free beer. Though that was kind of like handing it out. Uh, but yeah, so some signal, um, this is actually a real signal that I captured. Um, but we will not be looking at the output of the actual signal um, because it turned out it was a lot more uh, dangerous than I thought it was in the beginning. Um, so uh, these little two humps that we see, uh, disregard the little slight uh, peak in the center. Um, usually represent PSK, so I demodulated it, um, and in the beginning, uh, it was extremely dirty sounding. So let me see if I can get this going. All right. This is the boring part. So the first part that we heard about that, the little uh, consistent tones, that's uh, the little preamble. It's telling the radio, hey, I'm sending something. And another radio on the receiving side gets ready, sees those preambles, and it's like, OK. It may not get all of them. That's why it sends more than it actually needs to. Uh, and then it sends the next part is uh, just uh, look like random data. Uh, I don't know. what. It, maybe it was also filler for a preamble. But the center part is the important part. Uh, and these aren't the actual tones, uh, but this is what the tone was, um, or similar to what the tone was. So after a lot of reworking it and cleaning it up, this is what it should sound like. These will sound more familiar for you uh, if you're into phones. Awesome. So uh, I captured a signal that was very similar to that when I was doing uh, some testing against a water treatment plant. Uh, what that was, uh, that was not the exact signal, um, was actually a command uh, sent in clear text, it was just modulated, um, that was to open up a floodgate. Also sent another command to close the floodgate. You can capture both, you can replay it. I did not replay it. Uh, client did not want me to replay it, 
but they ensured me that it would definitely work. Um, so that's something that you can definitely do. Um, that's fun, knowing that. But uh, <laughs> so th those aren't the actual signals. Uh, if you want to know what those numbers actually meant, it was uh, just some random. Um, uh, in the beginning, it was just a pound uh, and uh, a uh, star. And then the number that played was 602-426-1337. Um, doesn't, it, not a real number. I hope it's not a real number. <laughs> if that's your number, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, uh, you know, it basically sent a phone number. Um, though it, they didn't say it was a phone number, but it was uh, same type of item. It was dual tone multifrequency. Um, sent the same amount of digits for a phone number. It would open and close gates. This was a very old system. They have replaced that system. Um, and it's very odd to find systems with that type of, um, you know, sending everything in the clear. Well, it's not odd to find things sending in the clear, but it's odd to find things so easily defeated uh, like that when it comes to um, critical infrastructure companies that actually give a shit. So let's see how this really works. Um, so the next signal I'm going to catch is uh, the one signal we did get, um, which happens to be uh, my key fob, <laughs> unlocking my car. Um, don't think you'll be able to unlock my car. I don't. Is there an attack like rolling keys? Oh god, my Jeep's just going to get unlocked now. Um, so I made everything in GRC blocks. Um, this is first capturing the signal. Um, so this is what it looks like in GRC. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're actually viewing it when you hit play on GRC. Um, so we introduce noise. That's, that's, that's something that we have to do. Um, and uh, I won't cover why we have to do that. That's a whole other talk, like I said. Uh, but we're introducing noise. But you know what we really care about is the red stuff. Um, and then as we see in the waterfall, I hit the key fob uh, three times. Uh, and uh, uh, Jeep Chrysler, uh, Jeep Chrysler Dodge. They're really, really. They're key, I guess this is a rant. Their key fobs are super ugly when it comes to RF spectrum, right? Like Jeep's not that bad. I mean, uh, Jeep is that bad. Uh, it is Ford's not that bad, but Jeep. If you look at this, this was like a few megahertz of like residual frequencies, just noise going when you ever hit this. And I was just like, what the hell is this? And uh, it, it contains nothing but it's just like noise that they don't care about. So they're really efficient, uh, non-efficient with their spectrum. So demodding this, uh, you know, this is the GRC blocks again. I'll just go through these quickly since I'm not telling you how all these work. Uh, but this is a software. Every option that you hit will pop up this screen. And then you hit play, and this happens, right? Um, so uh, I do a complex, the mag. Uh, who can tell me what type of modulation this uh, key fob is using then? Well, so, so so it is. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, definitely is. Uh, um, yeah. Damn. More people. So smart. No, I'm actually glad people are getting this. Um, yes, complex and mag is also used when we want to do a instead of using the AMD modulator as well and GRC, um, you can use that. Um, and you, you do have to have all these extra items. You can't just have you know complex and mag to threshold to the scope. Um, cause then you're just not going to get, it's going to make your intelligence process a lot harder. Uh, counting the samples, uh, again, just introduce a low pass filter. Um, there was no real, uh, output for this. There is some type of visual output, but it's nothing interesting. Basically, it's just the red line by itself. Um, cleaning up and down sampling. This is an extremely important part. Um, then we need to do clock recovery. Uh, once we do clock recovery, we start seeing things that make sense. Uh, so this is binary for all you that didn't know. But yeah, so these are the three uh, items in itself. Um, there is a preamble to this. We have to write a script that's in the program that then um, you know sets the preamble. Once you run all that, uh, you put it out to a uh, Clock recovery is the last step that we did. So it puts out a text document. It doesn't run in the GUI, so you don't see anything. Uh, and then it gives you the uh, output for this. This is the output for my key fob. Um, this is the three key presses. Interesting fact about this, 
only this data right here is the thing that changes. Um, so that's fairly interesting. Um, when you're doing signals intelligence, that's really what you're getting uh, for. So that's the signals intelligence part of that. Now let's get to some fun shit. Uh, jamming. Yeah, how about that? Don't do this, by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, but this system does do jamming. Uh, kind of looks like this. Uh, artist rendition. Uh, I was told I had to put that. Uh, so um, if you see the uh, actual uh, signal strength of this, uh, it basically is transmitting at cancer. Um, it, no, it's, it's actually pretty high. 40 dB, uh, 40 dB uh, is quite large. Um, if you do this type of testing, do it in a Faraday cage. Uh, I'm not joking about that part. Uh, I do have a Faraday cage that I am able to just hook up uh, NMO uh, antenna mounts to this Faraday cage, and that's that's where I did this. So, um, though I joke about, you know, like, oh, yeah, we can jam stuff, we can intercept stuff, uh, and we can replay stuff, uh, really don't do that. Um, you'll make people angry. They'll find you. There's no um, hiding for them. So, uh, ME Catcher, um, everyone knows about this. Everyone's seen how to do this. This has been out for a long time. Um, but it was cool. You know, I was just like, oh, this is going to take like uh, five seconds. I, you know, change all the configs to my liking, which is a lot different than how it was originally presented. Um, and you get things like this. Cool thing with ISME catchers that you can do is you can start playing around. Uh, so you can send like a text message from 911 saying the building is on fire. And uh, I do not recommend that, uh, doing that in the real life. Again, this was in a Faraday cage. If you guys can't tell, the reason why it's blue-ish on this is because of looking through the Faraday cage window that I had. Um, but yeah, so, th so you know, obviously this is very possible. We all know about this. Um, but now your vehicle can do it too if you're in a very large Faraday cage or you have it hooked up to a smaller Faraday cage. Um, so other builds, wrapping this up. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, I don't want to spend $4,500. I do not blame you. Um, uh, I didn't want it to either. In fact, it, I wouldn't have if I didn't already have most of this gear. Um, so... Uh, but let's just say you want to do this on the super cheap. You're not really looking to do uh, a permanent install. Uh, you don't want the little computer. You have your own laptop. Uh, you don't need to monitor, you know, 20 megahertz or 64 megahertz of bandwidth at the same at one time, um, which is what the USRP B210 can do, which is what I have running in the Jeep. Um, and you just want to get started in this. Uh, first thing I would recommend, just get an RTL SCR. It's a little black thing. Um, get the one in the metal case with a 0.5 ppm. You don't, you may not know what that means, but you will learn what that means quickly, and you will hate your life uh, if it is like at 100. Which the plastic ones, the ones that come in the plastic case, usually we we bought around 50 of those at one time. We tested them out, and the average was actually uh, uh, about like 75 ppm. Uh, and that's error rates, stuff like that. Um, so 0.5 is, is excellent, especially for $50. Um, you need a magnetic uh, antenna mount, uh, some type of low-noise low amplifier, uh, a USB cable that you can then just uh, strip off and solder onto the low-noise amplifier, and a pigtail to go from the RTL to this. Um, that is, you know, about $200. So you can start doing this. If you just want to start with the RTL SCR, great, do that. Um, but if you're like, ah, oh, I already do this stuff, uh, but I want a more intense system, you can go with the system that I built. This is what it looks like um, in my Jeep. I have a screen up in front, a little 7-inch uh, HD monitor that controls everything. Um, and I have this in the back. And this is how I drive around my vehicle in Atlanta all the time, uh, not trying to listen to your phone calls. Um, yeah, so, so there are a few more builds. I show different builds with a Hack RF, uh, a Blade RF. Uh, you know, a, a B200 if you don't want uh, MIMO. I wanted MIMO. Um, all these other items and these documents I will be releasing uh, this week. So look for that. Uh, at, uh, the URL will be coming up again. But yeah, so again, $200, about $200, super simple. No, no, uh, you know, real uh, thrills, uh, but it will get you started uh, and then you can, you know, move up. So in summary, uh, SIGINT uh, is no longer a government-only subject. They're actually private companies that will do SIGINT for you, uh, not just TSCM-type companies as well. 
Um, they'll let you monitor your airways. It's really awesome. Uh, building your own covert signet package is not very difficult. Um, make sure to be legal. That is my most important talk throughout my entire, uh, most important point throughout my entire talk. Uh, have fun and, uh, yeah, go build a SIGINT Jeep. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I think we should have like a few minutes for those. Yes. Oh, awesome. So there you go. $20 to start with RTLS, um, RTL SDR with one PBM. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, so the question that he asked just one second is, uh, he was just informing me that there's a cheaper RTL SDR that has a one PPM guarantee. Uh, you in the back, sir. For, oh, for, uh, coax, uh, so the jumpers in between, uh, the USRP and the LTR or the LNAs and the PAs and then, um, up there. So I used, um, uh, 240. Um, what, what, RG240. Um, it was good enough. Uh, you know, I didn't need to go to like extremely low loss, uh, 400. Uh, that would have been a little bit too thick, too unflexible, uh, for it. Also, I was able to get the RG240 with dual, uh, with SMA connectors already pre built. So I didn't have to custom build cables or I didn't have to pay a company to custom build cables. Yes. Any other questions? Awesome. Have fun. Thank you for coming.